Well, I want to thank God for the time we, I have with you today. I have a very good, amazing, wonderful news that I want to share with you. Dear friends, dear partners, pastors, friends, you know, everyone that's in the kingdom of God that understands the time that we live in today, that is taking a very sure, a serious look at how we are called back up again to the battlefront on how we serve the Lord in this time and hour going forward. As our world changed, yes, our world has literally changed. Our nation has changed. The world has literally sh shifted because of the seasons and the times that we live in. And I'm here to announce to you that here, especially at Wild Trumpet TV and Radio Network, this brand new vision that God gave me six years ago. Six years ago, the Lord woke me up. He had showed me in the vision that I would start a network called the Trumpet Network. He gave me the name. Well, the word trumpet was not new to me because I have read my Bible and found out that the trumpet is a symbol of um, a sound in the Bible. It's synonymous to great moves of God. It's, it's a symbol of warning. It's a symbol of preparation. It's a symbol of awakening. It's a symbol of literally uh, a marching order, an army getting ready for battle. Or if an enemy is coming, uh, you know, the trumpeters blow. They, you, normally they are on the upper room or the upper walls, those who are protecting the city, and they sound, you know, the trumpet. And so that people can be allotted or the soldiers prepare themselves. And so I understood exactly what God was talking to me about this. But going before that, then that also reminded me, you know, going back into my school days, uh, I was the timekeeper. Uh, I, I used to blow the trumpet. The trumpet was actually the, the instrument that we used at our school to prepare uh, prepare us for either we're going to class in the morning at 7 a.m., uh, breakfast at 10, and in the evening when school closes. So I'm the one that need, went to the, to the tower and blew the trumpet. But on top of that, at 5 a.m. in the morning, I was the one that went to my tower. I used to have my own tower. I loved it. I loved it. How did I learn to play the trumpet? I learned to play the trumpet actually through a man, a man called um, Fru Driscoll. When my dad, my dad came back home and he brought these big records of Phil Driscoll and he used to play the trumpet songs. And I said, man, this was so powerful. And so I, I, I because we had gotten a few instruments there, you know, at, at our church back then with Pastor Robert Kayanja and, uh, and my dad and others. So I picked up the trumpet. I started to learn how to play it. And so, long, long story short, I learned how to play. So when I went back to school that year, I was the one that was chosen to, to, to do, to be the timekeeper because they had me play the trumpet and say, well, since we're using a trumpet, we're going to have Michael be, be the timekeeper. So I loved it because for me, that was a symbol of leadership. I, the, 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 sound that, the sounds that I used to play for each school, the songs that I used to play for each class, in, out, breakfast, lunch, whatever, you know, I was leading over 1,800, 2,000 kids. So that gave me a position. Everybody knew my name. I was leading and everything. On top of that, I was chosen to be the spiritual leader of our school. So because I grew up in a staunchly strong Christian foundation of a school. And so, uh, so when God spoke to me about the Trumpet Network and going back to my school days and what that meant, because at five I used to wake up and when I blow it, all the students in the parts of the, you know, the campus got up to pray. The first part was to pray. Then I blow another one. They prepare to go in the in their showers, get ready, and then breakfast and all of that. So I knew it. It's time for preparation, school time, and everything. So here God comes in and tells me that you will, you will, you, you will launch a network, and this network will be an end time sound to the body of Christ to prepare themselves for the coming days ahead, where we are headed, where we are today. It would be a trumpet that was sound to awaken the body of Christ for the times we live in to take on the full armor of God because the church of the last day is going to have to be strong. I knew exactly what the Lord was saying. But of course, navigating through what that meant and what it requires is what I didn't have. So I brought together a team of uh, TV uh, 
uh, leaders and pro developers and builders and station managers. I mean, they came together. You know, for some reason, God gave me favor. So when I spoke about the idea, they came together. We sat down. We started talking, and I shared the vision. I kind of said, strictly, God was speaking to me that this station would be a station of evangelism. It would be a station of discipleship. It is a place that prepares soul winners to go back into the field. Like today, the fields are ripe. The harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. Jesus spoke that almost several 2,000 years ago. Today, it's still available to us. The harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. So what do we do with the harvest? There's no problem with Jesus. There's no problem with the word. It's the laborers, those who are going into the field. This station, God is giving it to us. This network, God's giving it to us that it will be able to prepare mighty leaders. If you've been in the church, for 40 years and you've been equipped in the word, we prepare you to go in the word, not to stay in the pews. You, okay, so we are going to be working alongside pastors. You know, we are getting the leaders and, and, and evangelists, all of them that call themselves revivalists, prepare them and send them back out because the harvest is now. We need thousands and millions of laborers who are going to go back into this hiding world right now when the world is very hopeless, when the world's sick. So we are prepared to have, that's what the Lord spoke to me. Number one, it will be evangelism and discipleship. Number two, we are, we are a network that's going to go around the world to bring you, to bring the saints, places where God's affect, affecting change. God is moving mightily. God's shifting systems and everybody, you know, God's moving just because we have the pandemic and have all the CNN and networks, all of them are talking about one thing doesn't mean that all beyond all that chaos, God's not moving. God's moving everywhere saints. And we are going to be the network that will take it over there. We will show it. Why? To raise the faith of saints that we are not bombarded. We are not shut down. Nobody can shut down the frequency of the body of Christ. Okay. So that's what I want to share with you today. Number three, we will be a network that's going to highlight missions, 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 missions. Taking the gospel of the kingdom to the ends of the world. You know, seeing the demonstration of God's power in different parts of the world. And also seeing the work of kindness and compassion all over Africa, all over Europe. All over the United States in America today there is over two million children two million children that go hungry two million children that's not Africa that's the United States of America children who don't have access to meals yeah America with all the good food I, I go to restaurants myself you know sometimes to pick up something and before the restaurants close they pour out food yes two million million children in America go hungry so the mission field is not only outside, it's right here in this nation. We are going to be able to be that na network, or we are that network, that God is giving us a heart. Let's take the commerce to where people are being transformed. Our church here in the city does humanitarian work, feeding the homeless, and uh, giving out food to families that are hurting. That's where the real deal is. Can you imagine? These three points all deal with people. They don't deal with anybody. They deal with people that are outside that have not seen compassion. When we've gone out on different apartments and knocked doors, I was, we were giving out food this morning and people were very thankful. They told us, you know what, our work hours have been cut off because of pandemic. We don't have food. We give them tons and tons of food. Imagine it's happening here. So we're that network that God has called to do that. And God spoke to me and I understood that because I come from a country, Uganda, that lost millions of people due to HIV AIDS. They died. It left two million orphans. Two million orphans. These are children who don't have help, access to help. And so many ministries, both from here and around the world, have come in to help with this pandemic that was taking place that almost nearly wiped out the entire generation. I can tell you what I'm, what, what, in reality, two million. Our, our church and our ministry back there that my dad leads has schools. We've opened up schools. So look at that. And so guess what? While all that goodness is happening and people are coming from all from here and going over there, 
nobody's highlighting you know whether it's in the congo whether it's i have friends in the congo that are going over there with mission actually we have a school of ministry right now we have almost 1000 you know 1000 students pastors in in congo right now that are going through our program in the new testament book of you know uh, new to, to, to some new testament bible college that we have over there also in rwanda and in burundi we have students over there in Uganda. We're expanding everywhere. All these missions, you cannot see them on camera today. Our network is going to be able to is, is going to be able as we open up our front the frontiers of extending this technology to the rest of the world, millions to tell them go back to India, everywhere, to show them that Jesus Christ is Lord. His compassion has not ceased. For he loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, he said, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached, and the end shall come. I come from a country that has, you know, we talk about revival happening, that has got a testimony of global, of a mighty move of God that's come out of there. And the reason why I'm here in this country as a missionary to this country, okay, to share what God has done in a country that was devastated. America is being devastated right now. It's going through a tremendous amount of, of attacks on every level. And I saw my country almost wiped out. I can tell you that. Almost. And God took a nation that was broken, almost signed into, into the Islamic State. It was going to be an Islamic nation. Idi Amin killed a lot. Of, he almost killed my dad. Idi Amin. And God turned that nation and brought revival and sprung a nation where we had small churches, seven people, then with my dad and Robert Kayanja and them. And now thousands of churches have been born and revivals opened up. And, and the systems that be today, they are now employing more Christians in places of political places than they used to. If God can do it somewhere else, he can do it here in America. And I'm praying for a mighty move of God to break out in America. I'm, I'm praying. That's the reason why, as missionaries, we are believing God, that God will call us together, pastors and leaders, to see this great country remain a godly country. The enemy is fighting America. The enemy is fighting America because he doesn't want it to be a godly Christian country. He's dividing the hearts of men with anguish and chaos and everything. But that won't happen on our watch because God is raising up a standard against the enemy. I'm here to remind you of that. And that's the reason why on this network, you're going to see men of God like Billy Graham. You're going to see men of God. Yes, they're not here with us, but we're going to show their classics. They're going to show their, you know, we're going to see Ron Hart Bonke. We're going to see R.W. Shambach. We're going to see uh, Till Osborne. We're going to see Benny Heen. We're going to see, we're going to see Benison Idaho, sir. We're going to see the cutting, Greg Laurie is going to be here. James Robinson, all of the evangelists, the evangelistic ministries. We're going to show, you know, new vision and a wild vision and all of this compassion, compassion international. All these ministries that go out and impact people. We're going to show men of God like Mike Biko and all of them that are, God is using revival. You know, you know, all of these mighty prophets of God that are going to come on this station. And let's team up together and take the gospel to the ends of the earth. Saints, it's time. It's time for us to lift up the banner of Jesus Christ. And I appeal to you. And I cry, I, I'm not even crying. I'm, I'm asking men of God to stand with us. And believe God that the next coming days, we're going to be in for a mighty awakening as we are asking God to have this television network turned on for the kingdom of God. We're going to use all of the media outlets that are available to us and the media technology that's available to us. You will watch us on your cell phone. You watch us on the website. You watch, you watch us on smart televisions all over the world. You watch us on satellite and cable and everywhere. Why? Because the work of the kingdom is now. I'm here to remind you, these are the days. This is the hour for the message. And so I'm inviting you to pray with us. I'm inviting you to partner with us. You know, I just came off the phone with so mighty great men of God that are already excited to, to stand with us so we can go forward with the mighty message of the kingdom of God. I'm excited that we will be a, a, a channel that we will tackle and talk about everything that pertains to the kingdom of God. 
yes we have so many great networks i love i love tbn you know ma i love desta with michael slam i love tv christian television actually for the most part it has done so many great great things around the world back in africa you know it's because of christian television like desta and them and all of the others that have been able to come and shift how we do christianity and now god sending us here to bring the gospel back here do you know that each year each year the church in america has not added new converts at least if they have it's only half a percent but we've been losing so many people these are statistics that are on on hand and now we've entered into the pandemic where our people are not with us anymore god has given us the wall to reach it instead of being fearful if people are going to be back god has given us an entire harvest for us to go and this is a network that we are going to strategize to reach the lost the unsolved 2 billion people that are not have not been reached and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all nations and the end shall come i cannot wait to see you i cannot wait to see our great partners and friends being able to stand with us as we go forward in the name of jesus right here on the world trumpet tv i welcome you we love you we bless you and we thank God for you. Let's do it together in Jesus' name. Amen. Sound of the nations call.